Hi, how you doing? Okay, so now you might be saying, but Angie, how, you know, you're one of them. You, you practice witchcraft and you pray to Yahshua and, and, and Mother, Mother Mary is part of your, your worship, you know, and, and I have videos, lots of, I've talked about that. Mary takes you to Jah. You know, that's why on my candles, if you look, look at my playlist, the blue robe, the Yahushua, or the blue robe, Yan Sway, about the candles. Um, you know, Mary is, um, is not, uh, is not Jah to me. Ja, she takes me to Jah, but she's on a higher level than just a regular person. And she's the program of, of Yahushua, but that's another subject. So, you know, Benanji, you know, how, how can you do this? So in witchcraft, we can pick any deity, you know. The Yan Sway is essentially a witch. I'm a witch. And and I've chosen to, uh, the deity of, of uh, Bob Marley. It's like, I'm a witch that's a Bob Marley fan. And that's in, and that's Eile Slossii. Rastafari changed his name to Eile Slossii at the coronation. Same person, Rastafari, Rastafarianism, Bob Marley's religion. It's a, you know, Rastafari, Eile Slossii, I prayed to Jesus, etc., etc. Okay? So the thing is, is that nobody, like I said, is hypocritical to say, you know, but they're they said devil worshippers because they do pagan things. All those people do pagan things. None of us can escape paganism. It's the roots of all theologies and religions, languages and everything. The Kabbalah, it's inside everything. It doesn't make any someone satanic. We're all doing the best we can, okay? But it's uh, in the bad guy and in the good guy. So it's a sign of the times for everybody. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, there's power and consistency, words, sound, and power. You know, there's a weakness in lying, you know, because now your word is no good. You're only as good as your word, your word's your bond type thing, you know. So if I'm going to worship the deity of the Bible, then I have to be consistent with that, you know. So, so the witchcraft part isn't the inconsistency. The inconsistency is when... You know, that's why I don't do Christmas on the 25th, because Nimrod and putting and celebrating Nimrod as a deity is the religion of Babylon. The religion of Babylon is the antagonist in Rastafari, you know, chant down Babylon and all that, you know, the, like the book, The Two Babylons and uh, by Reverend Hislop, whatever, I have a, I, have, I, got, I go over all this quite a bit in my other videos, you know. Modern day Babylon, it's called Babylon. The beast, the red dragon, is called Babylon because it's because it, there is a connection between that and ancient Babylon, you know. And so, through overstanding, I, I know what parts is is an antagonist to the to the to the deity that I'm that I've selected. Okay, a jaw. It's jaw's enemy. Jaw's enemy. Okay. So Mr. Herbert Armstrong, the Rasta Elijah, um, who you, it's like a phase you go in and through in life. The Elijah is kind of like a phase that prepares you for for job, for the incarnation, you know. Uh, but yet it's still always a part of you, you know. So the big thing with Mr. Armstrong's work is what he calls the plain truth. What is the plain truth? The plain truth is it's not really about the truth. It's about what does the Bible say? Mr. Armstrong's ignorant of the Hebrew language. You know, he talks about different translations, but he doesn't really know the Hebrew language. He doesn't know the Kabbalah. He doesn't know that the, it's Jah. It's the deity of the Bible is Jah, not God. He calls it the Church of God and the true Church of God. The word God, using the word God, using the name God, God, G-A-W-D is the Assyrian Most High God. And, and he talks a lot about the Assyrians, but obviously he doesn't know that. You know, there's a lot of things Mr. Armstrong doesn't know. He talks about the Trinity and the cross, and he talks about these things and calls them pagan, and, and therefore it's bad. He doesn't really get this part. There's a lot of things that he doesn't really get, you know. Uh, but it's not his job to do that. What his job to do is this is all about 
these are the last days and we're moving to the next stage, which is peace and, and uh, not believing God's a man in the sky, but is, is, is within the chambers of the heart. That um, no book is the word of God, but the word of God is the still small voice within and the relationship with the holy guardian angels and stuff. You know, it's about going, those are the things, the concepts that we're supposed to be growing into and the point of all this, you know. So it's the end, the last days, the end times, because it's the end of the story of the Bible. Now we don't need the Bible, but, but it's still part of us, you know. It's still, you know, save the bones, like I say, you know, the bones are the scriptures. Um, so the plain truth that Mr. Armstrong talks about is really just the context of the story. So if you're going to select the deity of the Bible, Jah, then, you know, if, you're, if you see my playlist, and I'll leave a, a link in the description box, the playlist of who wrote the Bible, if you really understand who wrote the Bible and you understand the Kabbalah and how that's older than the concept of a written Bible, and it's a more of a foundational part of the religion than the Bible. If you understand who wrote the Bible and why the priests and the kings and what they have to do with it and stuff, then you can see that, that the Bible can only be taken so seriously, you know, but save the bones, you know, it's, it's something of value, but yet... Um, it, the deity. So when you in in witchcraft, when you select a deity, you know that all all gods are made by the hand of man. You know, you don't ex, you don't selecting a deity. You know, you don't, doesn't mean that you believe that that deity's you know real and true like people mean when they say that. It's just a. It's it's like on an altar you play you put you put an an item on the altar. Uh, you know, and, it, and you're charging it with that energy. You're assigning that energy to that thing and charging it full of that energy, you know, and creating this magical link uh, psychologically and everything to, for that thing, you know. So when you select a deity, you, you absorb the context of the story, you absorb the idea of that deity, and then you, you charge and assign everything to that deity and it becomes a tool, you know, a link, a magical link to things spiritual and stuff. So a deity is a tool that a witch can use, you know, and you, you can be an atheist and a witch too and just say, well, I'd rather not have that tool altogether. But I think that's kind of foolish just because it's a, it's a powerful tool, you know, it's a big part of it, you know, and those people, they're expected, they're, they're hung up on the idea the, you know, God has to be real, but really it's not that. So the plain truth of uh, the, the plain truth that Mr. Armstrong is all about as the Elijah that prepares you for Jaws, because you have to understand the context of the story, you know, the, the context and the concept of the deity before you're going to be able to select that deity and charge and assign it as this magical link and this magical tool. So it doesn't need to be 100% true or real or blah, blah, blah. Um, it is based on things that are real and true in history, you know, because the Bible's antedates uh, writing down of history and things like that, because it's such an ancient thing, you know. So, and blah blah blah. You see, what, you see what I mean. So, so the reason I don't do Christmas on the 25th and that is because according to the deity that I've selected, Jah, that's the antagonist, and it's just not consistent. It's kind of like lying, and your word is your bond, you know? You got to keep your word pure, 